So how does a radio telescope actually work? Well, first of all, we need some kind of hardware that can actually detect radio waves. So a normal radio will have some kind of aerial, an antenna like this. And the way this works is that if you have an incoming radio wave like this, that will produce an electric field within the aerial. So that means you have this electric field in here moving up and down. And that's the signal which is then received by the electronics. This is called a dipole antenna and it's reasonably sensitive, especially if your radio waves are coming in in this direction. It can just about detect them as well if there's a little bit of an angle there. What this isn't very good at though is detecting radio waves if they're coming in from there. So if you were to point this straight at the sky and try to detect a radio source which is straight above you, then this isn't going to detect those radio waves very well. There's also one more consideration, and that's that radio waves have a direction in which they oscillate. They can come in like this, or they can come in like this. And this is only sensitive to the ones that are coming in like this. So if we want an antenna which is sensitive to all of the sky, then it's not enough to have a single dipole. What we're going to need is several different dipoles, all going out in different directions. And with lots of different dipoles, we'll be able to detect radio waves wherever on the sky they're coming from. Also, if we want to detect these really, really weak signals from outer space, then just a few dipoles isn't going to give us enough sensitivity. So we're going to need many, many of these dipoles. This is the Murchison Widefield Array, or MWA. And this is a low frequency radio telescope, absolutely brand new, that I'm working on at the moment. And you can see that it just consists of many, many dipoles. We need those many dipoles so that we've got sufficient sensitivity to detect very, very weak signals. Making lots and lots and lots of dipoles and putting them out in a field works really, really well for radio waves of longer wavelength because the size of a dipole depends on the type of wave that it's designed to detect. So a radio which is designed to detect a wavelength of one meter will have dipoles around about a meter long or some fraction of that. As we go up to higher and higher frequencies, the dipoles get smaller and smaller and smaller. So either we need to build millions and millions and millions of these very small dipoles, or we need some other way to get the collecting area we need for our sensitivity. One way to do that is to build a reflector. So what we can do is we can build a large reflector which has a parabolic shape. What a parabola does is to focus light or radio waves on a particular point. So if you have radio waves coming in here and radio waves coming in here, they're all focused at the same point. And then we can just put a little dipole in here or some other kind of receiver and we can detect radio waves with a very large collecting area. This is exactly the principle behind a satellite dish and it's also the principle behind really big radio telescopes such as the Parkes radio telescope. These are dishes of uh, 60, even 100 meters in diameter, which essentially work in the same way that a satellite dish does, having a large reflector to have a large collecting area to get enough sensitivity. So for longer wavelength radio waves, we have this big field full of little dipole antennas. For the shorter wavelength radio waves, we have dishes which collect the radio waves and focus them on a smaller receiver. But what we really want to do is actually produce an image of the radio sky. So how exactly do we do that? There's something very clever that we can do if we have multiple receivers in different positions. By combining the signals from two different receivers, we can actually work out where on the sky those radio waves are coming from. If those two receivers are very close together, that will give us a rough idea of where in the sky the signal is coming from. 
if those two antennas are very far apart, that will give us a very, very precise measurement of exactly where on the sky those signals are coming from. So what we do is we have lots of receivers spread out. Some of them are very close together, some of them are much, much further apart. And what that allows us to do with a lot of computer processing and some very clever mathematical trickery is actually build up an image of the entire sky. And here is one of those images from the MWA. It covers about 30 degrees by 30 degrees of sky. And what's really great about it is you can see an incredible amount of detail. You can see larger structures. These are things within our own galaxy. And you can see what looks like lots and lots of stars. This isn't actually light coming from stars, but light coming from many black holes, very, very far away, scattered across the universe.